Josh Benson is my guest today. And let's just get the elephant out of the room. He's been in a wheelchair since three months old. Um, yep. Josh, tell me a little bit about some of the work that you do and, you know, why you're passionate about it. Uh, so I work at a local range here and as a firearms instructor, and I've been doing, I've been doing the shooting thing for 16 years now. So, uh, my big thing is I like introducing people to shooting because I know that can be a big, uh, hurdle to get over because we were all there one time. I remember uh, when I was 21, I went and bought my handgun, had no idea what I was doing and went and found the local range and was like, all right, let's do this. And I was terrible. And so I signed up for some classes and I really enjoyed it and got hooked up with the right people and it kind of took over my life. <laughs> wow. So that's incredible. So Man, it's hard to talk about, you know, um, physical disabilities and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. so you've been confined to a wheelchair. Um, your right arm, wait, your left arm is at a hundred percent. Uh, it's it's more like probably sixty. I don't have a tricep. Okay. So, yeah, anything that you do with your tricep, I can't do. Wow. So everything is one hundred percent bicep. And your right arm. Like how how would you describe where your right arm is? My right arm probably about twenty percent. I don't got any grip. Uh, it can I use it? You've seen me shoot, and uh, I use it to support my left arm. But that's really all it's there for is just kind of some support. Uh, I hook it under my bicep, or I hook it under my tricep to basically lock my arm straight, so the recoil doesn't bend, uh, make my arm bend. Because I don't have a tricep to counter that, so. I kind of use my right arm. All I can do is just pinch basically my other arm uh, hooking underneath, but grip, nothing, lifting stuff. Nope, not going to happen. So I am, for all intents and purposes, a one arm shooter. So, wow. So I've seen you shoot. Like, so just for, you know, the folks that are watching or listening, uh, Josh, he, he shoots like IDPA, Steel Challenge. He shoots classes. He's an extremely accomplished shooter. One of the, one of the best shooters of, I know. And that's completely separating the fact that, you know, he has physical disabilities. So he's better than a lot of the shooters that I know that are fully able. So the way that you shoot, like uh, the basically like this kind of thing yep. right here, is it? Okay. Yep. So you have your left arm and you hook your right arm underneath for stability. Yeah. Mainly it's just to pinch that tricep so my arm doesn't flex up and then just to support my shoulder. And like I injured my shoulder a couple of years ago, so like I really need I don't I have to support more than I used to. So is there anything on the gun itself physically that you have to that you have to look for in order for you to be able to like like <laughs> use it effectively? Like so that's been a long journey. Uh I I, I shoot nine millimeter, so that's kind of I mean everybody shoots nine right now, it seems like, but it works for me. And it's not too much recoil. That's why I started off shooting and it worked out. I did for a short time go to a 45, but it was just follow-up shots weren't good on it. And so I've been sticking to the nine millimeter. And the real the thing that I've kind of discovered lately is compensators. I jumped on that with everybody else. Yeah. Uh, I noticed though for me, because we did I, I've done with friends and stuff, and you guys at the range, time drills and I get about a 30 to 35% increase in speed in my splits and in my overall strings if I'm running those uh, compensators. And so for me, it's a significant improvement. Like I'll take 30% any day over just an instant uh, instant thing. So uh, yeah. I like compensators. They, they got me. Uh, I've had to fiddle with my guns a little bit to get it to work. 100% it's still not there. Uh, my carry gun is a 48 is a Glock 48. So I haven't, I haven't messed with that. My Glock 48 just basically has a red dot on it and a simple compensator. It's not all raced out because I don't trust that from a carry gun, but I'm working on it. I'm getting, getting it there. So the compensators have been a huge improvement for me. 
like 30% on top without doing anything, just adding a compensator. All of a sudden, times went up about that. So, so do you do a lot of work with, you know, disabled shooters? And can you tell me a little uh, bit about some of that work? I do once a year, actually. So once a year, I go up to the Adaptive Shooting Summit up in SIG Academy. Hmm. And they host it right uh, last time. It was three days. It used to be two days, and they just expanded it to three days. Uh, any disabled shooters that are looking at, even if you're not a shooter, actually, anybody that's in a wheelchair, uh, has an, is amputate, like amputee, anything like that, uh, come up there and shoot with us. Like it's a, you just look it up. It's ADSS, uh, adaptive shooting, adaptive disabled shooting summit. And it is awesome. Uh, so we help up there. I help up there. I shoot, I participate. And I'm trying to think what else to say about it. A lot of, a lot of like wounded warriors is up there. A lot of the veteran things like they work, do a lot of work up there. Uh, have a, I think it's called is their little, is their shooting thing. But, uh, that's yeah, awesome. that's really, that's really the only time I get to interact with a whole lot of disabled people, honestly, like they ain't a bunch of, uh, they, there's not a lot in one area. So. I know a few of them that are here in, in town and I've worked with them. Like they've come in through, there's a guy in a wheelchair that actually, uh, he was, he was shot and injured and it put him in a wheelchair and he's a high spinal injury. So he didn't have a whole lot of use of his arms. And so he brought him out to the range and saw what we could do with him. And he was able to shoot some 22. He was able to shoot 22 real easy. He shot some nine millimeter, but it wore him out a little bit. So we went back to the 22 and, shot and had a good time and he really enjoyed it gave him a lot to think about so because he was wondering if he was going to be able to use a gun for self-defense and for him some of the challenges were a little bit difficult but we figured it out and the big one was going to the 22 that helped him a lot yeah that makes sense so what got you into shooting like how did you get uh, started down this road <laughs> well so i grew up in the foothills of like the cascade mountains in oregon and so we were country folk and I, like a lot of people like us, like dad taught me how to shoot. And uh, I only really shot a rifle though. I did hunting and because I was handicapped and had only use of one arm, I shot a lot of rifle. I didn't really know if I could even shoot a handgun. And when I was in high school and middle school, I was way too weak to be able to shoot a handgun really. Didn't put a lot of work towards it though. So I mean, I shot my dad's 22 pistol, but I really shot rifle. I grew up shooting rifle, shot rifle a lot, went hunting every year since I was 12. So uh, I grew up shooting, but my dad, he's a, he was a firearms instructor in Oregon. And so I had that, like had that already going like in the family. And then he was also on the board of directors and board of owners of like a giant 6,000 member gun range out in Oregon. So I got to spend time on the range and hang out and do that kind of thing. So I grew up around it and I came to Memphis uh, right before my 21st birthday, like two weeks before my 21st birthday. Uh, I came to Memphis for music college. I was a music major, played guitar and I turned 21. I was like, well, I need to get a handgun and start carrying and protect myself and I mean, I moved 3,000 miles away from home, so it was on me now. Like, I was I was responsible for myself, so I thought, all right, let's do this. Uh, I went to go buy a gun. They were like, oh, we can't sell you a handgun because you're from out of state. So I went to the DMV, got my ID, went right back to the gun range and got my <laughs> handgun. And so then I had a handgun and didn't know what to do with it. And I, I was like, all right, well, let's go to the gun range. And so I just so happened to wander into range masters of the gun ranges that were in town. That was the one that I chose, wandered into there, hung my target up. It was awful shot all over the place, but I was like, Hey, I can actually do this. Like I was kind of paranoid at first, put some rounds down range and was like, Oh, this isn't too bad. And I was like, well, I need to take a class because this isn't, this is bad because I was I was all over the target. My target was awful. I still have it somewhere up in my attic. My very first target, it was it was really bad. And so I was like, all right, well, let's take a class. So I signed up for uh, 
Tom's basic handgun class, Tom Gibbons, uh, his basic handgun class. And I went into that class and just right away, just the little simple things that like the basic fundamentals just took me to that like next level of like, oh, okay, like I get this. Cause like I wasn't gripping the gun up high. I wasn't doing anything. Once I started doing those basic fundamentals, it got way easier. And I was like, oh, I just needed to do this right. And so, and that kind of hooked me though. And I was like, now I want to take more classes. So the next class that was in, so I turned 21, August 25th. And so it was like August 29th. I took my first basic handgun class. And then two days later, or and then I signed up, and two or three days later, I took Gabe Suarez's Force on Force uh, handgun course. Because so I was like, well, I mean, this is going to teach me what I need to do if this is Force on Force training, and I'm going to see really what I'm going to have to learn. So I signed up for it and took it, and that actually really opened the door up for me. Because I figured out, be between me and him, between me and Gabe working together, uh, we figured out how I need to carry. That was a big hurdle. It was like, all right, how am I going to carry? Because I can't carry strong side sitting down in a wheelchair. There's no, I can't access it. And so the first thing we did is figure out how we, how I'm going to carry. And we came up with kind of a pseudo appendix carry that's like a cross draw, but kind of in the front. So the grip of my gun kind of straddles the inside of my leg and then the barrel of the gun straddles the outside of my leg. So it kind of sits over my thigh. Oh, and that seemed to work the best for me was that cross draw, but kind of in the front, I could put my shirt over it and I'm sitting down. Nobody pays attention to me anyways. People are like, Oh, guy in a wheelchair. And then they just go about their business. So I, mean, I could strap guns all over me and nobody would notice, but I had a good place to conceal. It was easy to access. And so then he went back to his back to his guys. I think they're in Arizona. And his holster maker made me a custom holster and sent it out to me. And so it was for an XD. That was my first pistol. It was an XD. So he got me made a holster for it and sent it out to me. And so this is 2003. And uh, put it on, and that's how I carried for a long time. And then I went back, like literally like the next month, I went back and took Tom's level two handgun. That's where we start learning how to draw from a holster. So that's how, I, that's the story of how I got into it. Wow. Wow. Man, that is incredible. Yeah, I got, I got real lucky who I got connected with. And like, I've always had good luck though about people in my lives uh, or in my life. Uh, they've been real good about being like, well, he'll figure it out. Like, they're not like, oh, you can't do this or here, try the dub. All right, let's see what you can do. This is what you need to do. Figure it out and I'll work with you. And like, Tom was really good about that. And Gabe Suarez was really good about that. Uh, after my second level handgun, uh, I immediately took John Farnham's course, like weekend course. He came out. I took course with him. And that's where I got my one-handed reload from, was from Farnham. Farnham worked with me on my one-handed reload. And so, like, I just got input from a bunch of different people about, like, well, let's try this and let's try this. And I just took classes and yeah, picked the brains awesome. of people that had been doing it a lot longer than I had. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, you have a real knack of getting in front of, like, like the absolute right people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I lucked into walking into... Uh, Range USA, and it was all kind of history after that. Just stroll right into the mothership. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So let's see. Um, what kind of reaction do people give you when they show up to class and then you're the teacher? Like, do they treat you any different than than they would anybody else? Or so they'll comment on it because and it's usually afterwards that i don't get much of a reaction before because i'm surprised sometimes i'm like because when i first started doing this i was like man i wonder how people are gonna see me and one the first thing i have to put out there is like i'm not a veteran because a lot of people assume i'm a wounded veteran i'm like i'm not a veteran civilian never did military service i have to get like a lot of people that's their first assumption uh and so i got to get that out of the way and then 
so I knew that I was coming from a civil, civilian side of it. So it's like, well, I need to, when I first started doing this, I was like, well, I need to put myself in a position of like, why am I in front of these people? So like I trained with everybody that I could like, so that kind of gave me the confidence to do it. Cause I was like, well, I mean, I've trained and learned under the best. I know what I'm doing and I go out there. I don't get much of a reaction from people. They're just like, all right, let's do this. And then it's usually afterwards. They'll, they'll make a comment be like, man, I didn't really know it was going to go on. I wasn't expecting you to roll in here and, and be our instructor. I was like, but it was great. And they give me compliments on it. So it's usually after the fact that they bring things up like that. Like I haven't really had anybody make any reaction before. I think they're just more like, oh, okay, let's see what this is about. Yeah, that's good, man. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, so, of course, you're a training junkie just like I am. But Yeah, I was. I wish I wish I did it more now, but <laughs> <laughs> I was. I spent, that's all I did in my 20s. But at some point, it was like, okay, when was the point where you decided, hey, I'm going to start teaching this stuff? uh basically i don't like school i don't like college and so uh i had made a ton of connections uh hanging out at range masters and basically living at range masters in the mothership and so uh 2003 it was three years later is when i took his uh instructor course so i took the i was like i'm gonna take the instructor course i think this is what i want to do like, I think this is my calling. I think I'm good at this. Uh, this is what I really want to put my effort into. And so I had made a bunch of connections on that side of it. And like a lot of the time, it's really about who you know and not what you know when you're first trying to get into something. Yeah. And so I kind of put the music thing aside and pushed full speed into that. It was 2006 uh, is when I passed. It was August 2006. So it was almost exactly three years later is when I passed his uh, instructor course. And I mean, you take, you've taken Tom's instructor course. It's not easy. It is easy now that we've been shooting for a while, but when you first go in there to do it, you're like, oh no. And so I had to prepare for it. And then I had to go in and do it one handed because Tom isn't just going to hand out things to anybody. And that's why I like working with Tom. That's why I liked taking his classes and spending time learning under him. Is because I he wasn't going to give me any handouts. Like he was like, "All right, this is what you have to do, do it." And so I was in there every day practicing. Uh, that first, the first year that I shot, it was I think it was fifty thousand rounds that I did that year through training and just practice. And then I I kept that up pretty good for the other two years. Cause I was about, I was at about 150 to 200,000 rounds when I finally took my class and cause I had to do it one handed. And so I had to push real hard to be able to do it. And the FBI qualifier, that wasn't that bad. I got a 96 on it. So that wasn't, that wasn't much, but it was passing Tom's range master course. Uh, his, his test, I don't know what test he does now. Cause I think he might've changed it. But it was the 10 round shot on the 8 by 11 sheet of paper. And I had to do that one handed with one handed reloads all under time. And so I, that was the probably about the year after that. That was my peak ability of shooting because I had been putting so many rounds down and practicing so much. So, yeah, that's that's really when it. I put all that effort in and, and got that one class out of the way. And then it was like, all right, this is what I want to do. And so then I started hanging around range masters all the time. And so he had brought other guys in for us, uh, for the instructors there, like the NRA and NRA guys. We all got NRA certified through that. And yeah, I spent Thursday nights was instructor night. So we were there for, I was there for instructor nights and yeah, I just kind of stuck to it and, it kind of became so, history after that. So, man, that's a lot of rounds to put down range. How much was ammo costing back then? Uh, it was nine cents a round. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> that yeah. hurts. So, yeah. Oh, so, so you were at the mothership. Like, tell me what TACCON was like back then. Uh, TACCON, I, I remember the very first TACCON. Uh, it was in 
it was in the mothership uh because that a couple i think the second year we went out to the police academy and did it out there uh at there at the police range and i mean i i had taken two classes from farnham already by then and uh that's when i first met south narc and a lot of those guys so that was my first that was the first time that i met a lot of those guys and so that got me in some that got me into that circle about being able to train with those guys and knowing those guys and uh yeah we had the we they did force on force in the bb gun range or the air gun i'm sure oh the bb gun range the air gun range where memphis practiced was that range masters and so we did force on force in there they had completely uh built up the range into like a bunch of different stages with sheets all set up they had like half a car like door in there like so we could do like a car thing on one of them like it was a really cool set up for especially the small space did you ever get to see pictures of it did you ever go in there i've seen pictures of TechCon back then and i actually visited that range a couple of times but yeah it was really it was small after, in there yeah it was after range master you know after after tom moved to uh to florida but yeah yeah that was tiny man yeah and so yeah. we had a ton of people in there shooting and going through that thing and in the classroom we had we had lectures and stuff so i mean it was a it was a great time so wow wow yeah oh man so yeah gum yeah so um uh, so let's put ourselves in the mind of someone that you know they may be considering uh gun ownership or they may be consider considering coming to a class uh but they may be afraid or they may have disabilities like what kind of advice can you offer to to that kind of gun owner i would say just do it don't worry about what people say because people are going to make comments you're going to show up with the wrong gun you're going to not know what you're doing right away and somebody's going to make a comment on it you just gotta push it aside we all started there everybody didn't know what they were doing at some point and so i think a lot a lot of times people forget that and then actually the people that say it the most, the people that talk the most probably don't take that many classes or shoot that much anyway. So you just got to ignore them. You got to ignore what anybody says and just like push through it and like figure out what works for you and like figure out what guns work for you, like what setup works for you because everybody's different and you're going to have your things that you got to figure out. And part of it is just sticking to it and figuring those things out because People can tell you what you need to do, but until it clicks in your brain and you might, it might click a different way. It might be, oh, well, this works. And if you're getting good times on the, on the timer, that works for now and try different things. And when you get better times, then be like, okay, well, this works better. And you always, always make sure that you have that thing that's tracking your progress. Like let it be the timer or your targets and stuff and just like, and stick to it. Like, don't go to the range one time and be like, okay, I shot my gun, I'm good. Because there's a there's a whole world out there about shooting. <laughs> it's a lifelong process. So you got to just yeah. ignore the naysayers and the people that might give you a hard time. You'll figure it out. Like, you just got to put the time in. Yeah. So I know you shoot matches too, right? Like, what kind of yeah. sports do you shoot? Like uh, right, now, right now I'm doing steel challenge. Well, right now I'm not. My cart's out, so I'm not doing nothing. But Steel Challenge is, is my favorite game right now. So, I know you used to play like uh, IDPA or yep. did you ever step IDPA, into I never did IPSC or USPSA. There's a lot of movement and stuff in that one. Uh, I did Cowboy Action. I like Cowboy Action a lot. Uh, but then with my shoulders and stuff, it's it's a lot of work doing it now. So, uh, actually, I, I did three gun back in the day too. I really like three gun. Uh, but again, it was a lot of movement. My shoulders aren't what they used to be. They do a new thing now. I just went, I got the honor of being invited to, uh, they do a thing called battle buddy three gun and that's for disabled shooters. And, uh, basically you disabled shooters and able body shooters get together and shoot a three gun match. And when it's the disabled shooters turn, they get in this like wheelchair that has a handle on the back of it. And one of the other 
able-bodied guys pushes them through the course so that guy can just so this able shooter can just focus on shooting and it's awesome and we got to go do i got to go do it out at uh jerry micklick's private gun range there uh so out in louisiana so we got to hang out with micklick and he taught us how to shoot three gun one day and then the next day we all went and shot a match with them and it was a real good time so uh so that's real fun so i want to get involved with those guys with the battle buddy guys and so just talking to them and trying to figure out they're getting everybody's input on like how can we make this more accessible for everybody and like and they're real cool about that because the thing that we figured out on day one when we were doing the classes is i can't shoot a shotgun anymore like i used to shoot trap and sporting clays and all that stuff and i just i can't do it anymore because my shoulder injury and my right arm like it just I can't do it. I'm getting older now and my body's falling apart. And so we figured out, all right, well, he can't shoot shotgun. That's fine. And uh, then with the rifle, the rifle's not that big a problem. 5.56, five, I've been shooting that forever. And uh, there's hardly any recoil in it. But the gun weight kind of starts getting to me. And so they actually got a uh, Lena Michalik's, uh 9mm carbine that she uses and so i ran that for the first half of it and then my arm was like then my arms were starting to wear out and so i actually ran the last half of the three gun match with just a handgun so i was shooting the rifle targets out like the out rifle targets with a handgun They're like whatever you shoot him you shoot him so i ran the rest of the course with just a handgun because that's what worked for me and so oh man that's legit dude tell me tell me more about that weekend that you spent with uh but Jerry and Lena Mitchell. Like. So that first day we did a class with him. And so he taught us all how to shoot three. And we started with hang and went to shotgun, shot some rifle. And I mean, I've shot and trained with a lot of people over the years. And it was weird, but I kind of learned more from him in those eight hours we spent than I probably learned in the last 10 years of doing this just because of his insights on stuff. And he kind of changed the way I think about certain things that we kind of ingrain into ourselves and then don't try to move away from. He's like, no, I do it like this. And I was like, oh, wow, I've never even thought about doing it that way. And it's like, huh. And so it really made me think about like, all the things that I've kind of ingrained into my training and kind of stuck to and not really experimented and changed. And so he had a lot of really good insights on that. I'm like, well, this guy is probably one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world. So I'm going to listen to what he says. And I started applying it. And I was like, wow, like I had, I saw improvements just in those eight hours. Uh, so that was great. Then the next day we did our match. And so we shot the match with them and like, and he gets in the chair and they push him around and he does it all from the chair. So you can That's do it like awesome. he do it. And like, yeah, he still beat us all. Like his times are ridiculous. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was just a good time. It was just hanging out at his range and shooting. And uh, it was a really well put together match. And like, if you're in a wheelchair and or disabled in any way, that's the guys to go seek out right now is the battle buddy guys. Like if you want to do competitive shooting, they are set up for you. They bring the wheelchairs there. They got people to help you. Uh, I can't transfer into those chairs by myself just because the way they're set up. And so they help me move over into those chairs. Like everybody's super helpful. And like they want to get you in there and they help load megs for everybody. And yeah, like you'll get well taken care of if you get in touch with those guys. And that's in Arkansas, correct? Uh, no, they're, I think they're based out of South Carolina. Okay. I think that's where their home base is but they they do matches all over the place so. and they're they're trying to expand they've been going for a few years now so they're just trying to get bigger and bigger and they need help like even if you're not disabled they need help they need people to go shoot matches with them and help out so if you're looking to volunteer that's something to help out with so yeah like where would we look for for something like that to to help out like is it battlebuddy.com yeah, or uh, battlebuddy 3 gun with the number three. Auto buddy three gun. Yeah. Number three.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna try to put that into the uh the description of the video. That's 
Dude, that's incredible. Yeah, that's those awesome. guys are amazing. Like those guys really, really have a passion for it. Yeah, that's and so a lot of the guys that I was with, it was actually most of the 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 disabled shooting community ends up being pretty small when events are going on. So the same guys that I was up with at uh, the ADSS up in SIG, most of those guys were, well, not most, I would say probably 90% of the guys that I was down there with at the th Battle Buddy 3 gun were all the same guys. So it's a real close-knit community that's growing because now we have that kind of yearly thing we do up at SIG together. And so it's getting to become a tight-knit community. Wow. So there's the yearly thing at uh, the ADSS, uh, shoot yep. up the SIG. And, they're, and the they're always community. looking for volunteers to help out up there, too. Right on, man. Right on. That's awesome stuff. So is that related to... Um, so I heard about this certification. Uh, I forget who, you know, who does that. There's the certification for uh, for helping um, disabled shooters. Yeah, Richard Cicero. Uh, that's who does that. And he's he's like the head instructor up there for the ADSS thing. He does a lot of, I know he does a lot of work with uh, trying to get the the rifle braces, the pistol braces. He does a lot of work with that, with SIG and like with the other companies trying to get that, the government not to take those away from us because those are actually adaptive equipment that help a lot of people. And so he's real big into that. And yeah, he does. We all, a bunch of us went down to Florida and took his like NRA dis, like uh, disabled shooters instructor course, I guess you'd call it. And that was really good too because I haven't really worked with a lot of other disabled people. And the thing with like disabilities is, yeah, I might be in a wheelchair and you might be in a wheelchair. And like two guys might have the same disability, the same spinal injury, but the way it affects them is going to be different. And so there's not a catch all for everybody. So what that really did is that opened my eyes to like, here's a bunch of different methods to try. And depending on what they can do and what can't they do, here's a toolbox for us to work from. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is sort of universal, like getting tucked into the back. Like if you're right-handed, getting tucked back into the back right side of your wheelchair as much as possible. So you have as much body contact with your chair for support. Like that's a big thing that's super helpful. And so... Some guys can't do that though. So you just got to see what their abilities are. And that's what that did is gave us a toolbox to work with. Uh, the able body guys that were there shooting, they had them kneel on a, they brought a metal chair over and then they kneeled one knee onto that chair so that it could simulate what being on a prosthetics like when you're shooting. Cause you lose a lot of stability. If you're standing on one leg with your knee on a metal chair. And so and then he taught us like ways for people, like people with prosthetics, how they can position themselves better to shoot and stuff. So it really was just, it's a big toolbox to use for when you get different, when you get people in to see what you can do to help them out. Wow. Man, that's incredible. So, yeah, gum. So, because I hear about it from a lot of other, you know, instructors as well. Like they're able-bodied instructors and then someone comes in in a wheelchair or they have a prosthetic and it's like they really have to think outside the box to yep. to come up with ways to help them. Yep. Um, to me, the, the big thing that I would tell people, oh, not to interrupt, sorry about interrupting. No, 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 no. I'm here for you, man. <laughs> the, the big thing that I would tell that I would tell those instructors, the main thing is like, Try to get the basics down of the, like, let's see what you can do and then work from there. Because if you try to figure that stuff out before you're actually working with them, it, you might end up just imagining a bunch of dead ends. So you really just kind of have to go by the seat of your pants when it comes to that. It's like, all right, can you hold the gun? Like, step one, can you hold it? All right, this is this is what your grip is. All right, right, let's. can you hold it up high enough? If they can't hold it up in front of their face to look down the sides, let's put a laser on it. See if you can hold it down lower and use a laser. So you won't know those things until you get in there with them and start figuring it out. So, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, sometimes we go to, you know, 
schools or we hear about other stuff where there's like I don't want to call it dogma, but there's these there's these things. There are these teachings that folks will have that like for instance, lasers, for example, right? Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Lasers suck and you should never use lasers and until someone walks in and, you know, the getting using their iron sights is a problem. Yeah. Or, you know, like you're using an optic is a problem. So, you know, that might be yeah, have you ever had course. to train someone how to use a laser? Have you ever messed with a laser to figure out the best way to use it so that if someone comes in, you can teach them, like, well, this is what I figured out. Man, that's awesome stuff. That's awesome stuff. So I think we touched on something earlier tonight. Like, you know, hey, you're going to come in with the wrong gun. You're going to, you may not have the right holster. Um, I feel like that's a message that doesn't get out enough, you know, like, I mean, like, I'll tell you about my first gun, my first gun. Well, back in the Marine Corps, I had a Beretta, but when I first got out, I had an M&P, but, you know, it took me a long time for me to realize that didn't work for me. And then I went to a gun show and I bought a JA-9. You ever heard of one of those? Yeah. Uh, like the Menez Jericho. Arms. Does Jericho make that? Who makes no, that? It's a Jimenez Arms. It looks Jimenez. like it was made of okay. hot metal. I know, yeah, I know Jimenez. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it was like it was at a gun show. It was one hundred and twenty-five dollars, brand new in the box, and uh, I never even got to shoot it. I took the slide off so that I could see how it worked, and usually mm -hmm. you could press the trigger so that the trigger bar moves, but some pin popped out. I put it back, <laughs> put it back in. It locked up the gun, and I think like a year later, I ended up like uh, selling it to a gunsmith for twenty five dollars. Nice, so, yeah, that's usually where those end up. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone those are the learning moments, though, you don't know that until you experience it, or someone else tells you. Yeah, so I hear about like, oh well, you know, Taurus is garbage, XD is garbage, and all these other bad guns out there. I mean. Guys, I'm just over it. I mean, like, bring your Taurus to class, okay? Uh, bring your XD to class. So Yeah, I see all sorts of guns come in. Skies with giant heavy triggers that she bought because it was purple. So Yeah. <laughs> and then, what? Well, okay, let's learn to shoot it. Like, that's all we can do. I don't see the point in wasting time berating them about what gun they brought. Like, all right, this is how you grip it. This is how you shoot it. They'll figure it out. They'll be like, man, I don't like shooting this. Like, they figure it out pretty quick. So, and then they go get something that works for them. So, because now they have knowledge. Now they know, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Because if you teach them how to shoot their gun, then when they go look for a new gun, they know what to look for. So, and that, that makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. So your teaching classes, um, I think uh, probably one more thing before we get out of here. Um, like, what about firearms instruction and working with people? What about that are you passionate about? I just like seeing that eureka moment on people's faces when they're like, oh, this isn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Or like, or the big one is like people just afraid of their gun. They're, they're like, hey, I got this thing going on in my life. I think I need it, especially here in Memphis. It's like, I need protection. I get a lot of that. A lot of my private com private lessons come through. They're like, uh, I have this going on in my life, and I think I need protection. And it's like, all right, let's see what we got, and let's, let's work through this. And seeing that eureka moment when they're like, oh, this isn't that bad. And then they kind of, they get, my passion kind of bleeds off onto them. And then I see their, gears start working in their head and I see them come back for more private lessons and more classes and stuff and I see them get into it and I see them taking it seriously and I try not to overwhelm people too much like because I know a lot of times they'll get it like you'll go see a certain person and they'll be like oh well, you'll never be able to defend yourself with that like you'll never be able to do this and like they just worry them They're like oh you're that 22 is not going to stop anybody you might as well just not have a gun then they get all worried and paranoid. And then it's like, well, 
I would rather them have something than nothing. And we're going to work through this. And it's a, it's a journey that we're going to go on together. And so when I see those type of people that are beginning their journey, it's like them, let me take them on that journey. So I can, I don't want to push them away from it or give them the wrong idea. I want to nurture their interest and then point them in the right direction. And so like, that's what, that's what makes me sleep well at night is knowing that I help those people. Wow. Dude, I think that's a great place to end it. Um, Josh, if someone wants to, you know, get some, some time with you, if someone wants to train with you, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me here in Memphis. Uh, you can email me. I'll give my email to, uh, Mikos and he can set it up for you. And, then and we'll put it I, I guess you can put it down at the bottom in your little thing just put my email down there and shoot me an email okay like maybe down in the comments or you know whatever else yep and i have a youtube channel i'll share it's usually just right now my youtube channel is just videos of me shooting and maybe somebody sees it and gets inspired by it but i eventually want to start making content for it about like this is how i do things and this is why i do them and so I want to build it around that. So then other people that are in that same journey of like, well, I can't do it the traditional way. Let's see how he did it. It's like, oh, okay, this is why he did that. Maybe I can take that and adjust it for myself. So it works for me because we're all trying to achieve the same thing. Point gun at target, press trigger without moving sights. <laughs> it's one thing. There's a million ways to get there. Yeah. Man, Josh, I just want to say thanks again for, for coming on. Um, this right here is Josh Benson. Guys, leave me a comment down below if you like stuff like this and give me some feedback. Josh, thanks again for coming. I really do appreciate it, brother. Yeah, thank you for having me. Cool, guys. Welcome to Memphis. Yeah. Folks, I want to give a very special thank you to the Top Gun Shooting Range in Memphis, Tennessee. This is where I teach personally. We hold permit classes, introductory courses, and advanced handgun self-defense courses. Uh, you can also rent guns to shoot on the range, including fully automatic machine guns. Also, in pure Memphis fashion, there's a barbecue restaurant in the building. Top Gun Memphis has 4.9 stars on Google reviews. So if you're in the area, come by and see us. Go to TopGunMemphis.com for more info.